Here's a project for converting a Polaroid Super Shooter camera to a pinhole camera. This is a Polaroid Super Shooter. You know, the cameras that will work are the Polaroid Color Pack series. We'll be capping this with Metromax Illustration Board. This is the double thick black. Very few of these cameras were made with tripod mounts, so we'll make a tripod mount out of, again, the Electromax double thick black, two pieces. These are four centimeters square with one eight millimeter hole in each of the pieces. We'll also be using a T-nut fastener for the tripod mount. T-nut fasteners come in a number of configurations. This one is considered a quarter 20 T-nut fastener, 5 sixteenths, as in 5 sixteenths high, by 3 quarter round brad. Quarter 20 T-nut fastener, 5 sixteenths by 3 quarter round brad. For a pinhole, we'll use 2,000 inch brass stock. This is also available in hardware stores or hobby centers. If you can't find brass stock, some people will use the section out of a soda can. Now making the pinhole, we'll also need very fine uh, sandpaper, anywhere from 600 to 1200 grade. Of course, we'll need our needle, and I use the smallest needle out of this badge, and I've centered it and mounted it into a exacto knife barrel. Other tools and materials you'll need for this project are a heavy duty exacto knife, a Phillips head screwdriver, a small screwdriver, a razor saw. If you don't have a razor saw, a hacksaw blade will do. A white marker, good straight edge, a roll of one inch photographers or gap tape, a clear acetone type glue, five minute epoxy, two part epoxy, and medium sandpaper. Also a pair of pliers. Throughout this project for eye protection, let's get to work. Uh, first, we want to do, we won't be needing this timer on here. It's only held on by double stick tape, so just work on this and pop that off. We'll open the back. If you look at the base of here, you'll see three, what look like three plastic, kind of like rivets or three plastic nibs. What you want to do is you want to chip it away at those and get those out of there. Pretty much cut them off. This is. Okay, the third one. Okay, now we should be able to grab a hold of the bag compartment and just pop it out. We've exposed three screws in here. And you want to take all three of those screws out. Okay, I'm going to take the lens and we get rid of that. Now, these steel clips kind of held in by plastic rivets again, and they should kind of just break out. The top one is the hardest. That's what we need the pliers for. There we go. Now, on the front of the body, there are two pins, two plastic pins right here. You want to get rid of those. That's what the razor saw was for. You just take those right off. And if you don't have the, again, the razor saw, use a hacksaw. You want to make sure that the front is flush. Take your piece of illustration board. Place your camera on top of it, face down, and you want to make an outline of the whole front cap. While that is still on there, you also want to make an outline of the center lens port. Okay, there we go. There's our outline for our front cap. With a fresh blade and your knife, Cut uh, your front plate. It's just uh, not trying to do this all in one shot. Make several passes to cut through because this board is really tough. Here's my cutout front plate. The center hole 
is only 8 by 10 millimeters. I really just wanted this square to establish where the center of the board should be. And now I'm going to set this aside and jump to the uh, tripod mount. On the bottom of the camera, I've drawn a center mark where I'm going to bore my hole for my T-nut fastener for the tripod mount. This horizontal line is 33 millimeters from the top of the camera, the front of the camera. Now, if this mark indicates the center of this area, you're drilling it off, you're going to bore it 15 millimeters off center. The reason why I'm doing that is the T-nut fastener will actually, part of it will actually be inside the camera here, and I'm trying to avoid these plastic ribs in here. The plastic of this camera is soft enough that you can bore a hole using an exacto knife. Use firm pressure, not enough to break it, but as you can see it's trying to peel out. The hole that you're going to bore is just big enough for the uh, column of the T-nut pass trying to fit in. I'll show you that in a moment. And your T-nut fastener will actually sit right inside. You're going to glue it with a two-part epoxy. It sticks out this side. With a piece of your medium grade sandpaper, you want to prep the surfaces that are going to be glued. So stand up a little, roughen it up so that the glue has something to bite into. I'm going to do all the plastic surfaces. Scratch a little bit on the collar of the Tina Pester. Your four centimeter boards are going to be glued to the bottom of this camera, so you might want to puff up some, some of that surface with the sandpaper. With a paper towel with some alcohol or some surface cleaner, wipe down the areas that you sanded. Squeeze out some of your two part epoxy. This is where I find a chopstick to be handy. Mix it up. Instructions dab somewhere on that hole. And be very careful not to get the glue on the threads. That's the most important part. Press it down and load up the tip of your chopstick or applicator. Just kind of dab it all around in there. Now this was a five minute epoxy, so I'll just kind of let that ride. I'll take my two square Pieces of illustration board. Take clear glue, put a little on one surface, a little on the other surface. Squeeze these together. And it's smooth out where the glue has come out on the side. This board has a tendency to separate anyway, so this will help keep the board together. I'll go on this surface again. I'll go on the camera. And press this down into place. Take a rubber band. Or you could also tape it down as well. And let that sit. Well, we work on our pinhole.